What's up, Nick fans? All right. I am Victor Hatiba from Nick Fans Brazil channel. Today, again, again, my special guest, my special guest in Nick Fans Brazil. Welcome, welcome, Zach Brasiler, again in Nick Fans Brazil. <laughs> How you doing? Thanks for having me. Ah, thanks too, bro. I, great honor ever for me, you, in this channel. But let's go, let's go, Zach. Um, I won't uh, talk with you in this interview about your expectations with the New York Knicks and the next season, okay? Uh, first of all, first of all, uh, Zach, I want your opinion about two, two new players in New York Knicks, Joylen Brunson and Azaya Hartenstein in this team. What do you think about these guys? What's your expectations? Uh, what do you think about this? Um, you know, Brunson has been very good so far. Um, you know, he's clearly, you know, a, a leader. He's clearly the point guard this team has needed. You know, I, I've really liked just everything he's said, just in terms of, you know, working and, you know, kind of fitting in here and, and, and just really being the guy to, to kind of help organize them, I, you know, and then, then with Hartenstein, I mean, he's, he can shoot threes. He can, you know, he, he can be kind of a playmaker as a big man. I, I think they're both going to be helpful. I mean, I think Brunson is going to be a significant addition. You know, he's look, the Knicks have needed a point guard for a long, long time. And he's clearly, has the potential to be a good player. Like, I don't think he's a superstar. I don't necessarily even think he's an all-star. But, you know, considering just how badly the Knicks have needed someone at that position, he's a pro. He's a good player. You know, I, I think he's going to really help them. And I think Hardenstein is going to be very good. I mean, the guy does a lot of things well. You know, shooting the ball, blocking shots, distributing – you know, I don't think people quite realize how much potential he has. So, look, I, I think both of them are going to really be helpful players. But I think Brunson is obviously the big one here. Uh -huh, great. Uh, you mentioned, uh, I totally agree. Knicks don't have a solid PG uh, a long time ago. Zach, uh, when I remember this team had uh, Alfred Payton, point guard. Bro, my eyes, blood. <laughs> I remember this guy in Knicks, bro. And uh, uh, I, I don't, uh, you believe, but in the beginning, I don't like it about uh, Isaiah Hartenstein. But, but so many people talking about uh, your skills, uh, talking with me about the center, I change my opinion. I change. I, I see the, the center can be so great uh, for, uh, from New York Knicks. Uh, different skills compared it, uh, with Mitchell Robinson, Jericho Sings. Uh, if Nerlens Noel, the same price, the same price uh, with uh, Isaiah Hartenstein. I, now, I am curious in the next season, Zach, with this guy in New York Knicks. I, I think he I think he great I think he great good passer uh, open the floor nah, from from these guys bro I I excited I excited uh, to see two uh, these two guys in the season in the season um, Zach uh, I uh, I we talking about Jalen Brunson okay um, I want uh, your opinion about uh do you believe uh Jalen Brunson can help uh Julius Randall play better in the next season yeah I, absolutely and look we've we've seen um some good signs early from Randall you know he's he's moving the ball more he's you know he's playing without the ball this is very important you know he said the other day he watched a lot of European basketball 
um, just to kind of get a hang of, you know, learning kind of a different style. And he, he understands he's going to have to make adjustments this year. He's not going to be, you know, that point forward. They have a true point guard now. And look, it's going to take adjustments. I don't think it's going to be a, you know, completely smooth thing here, but I, I think, I think it's going to, I think Julius is willing to adapt. And that's to me, the most important thing here is that he, he gets that he's going to have to make changes, and he certainly seems willing to do so. Um, and I won't uh, talk with you about RJ Barrett. What do you think about RJ Barrett's extension? You know, I, I think it's a good thing. You know, clearly they, they wanted Donovan Mitchell, and they were willing, you know, to, to include Barrett. It didn't happen, and they kind of turned around and extended him. And, you know, RJ said all the right things about, you know, he didn't, the, the trade stuff didn't bother him that the Knicks turned around and extended him. They didn't have to do that. Look, I'm a, I'm an RJ fan. I think he gets it. I think he understands New York. I think he understands the pressure and he wants to be here. He said it multiple times. Look, he signed that extension. He didn't have to do that. Um, you know, how good is he going to be? Is he, uh, is he an all-star caliber player? Is he, could he ever be like a number two on a title contender? I'm not sure. I, all I know is this is a guy who's improved each three of, you know, all three of his years in the league. And I think he's a very good player. And I think the Knicks did the right thing of, you know, locking him up here. Ah, great. And, uh, Zach, you know, Knicks fan base in this offseason talking so much, so much about, uh, Quentin Grimes versus Evan Fournier. You know, you know, Knicks fan base talking so much about this. Uh, I want your opinion about this. What do you think about this? Yeah, look, I have no problem with Fournier starting. I, I really don't. You know, Grimes has only played 46 games in the NBA. As good as he looked in summer league, it's still summer league. You know, um, Grimes has been hurt. You know, he hasn't played in a preseason game yet. Maybe he plays tonight. So, look, there's nothing wrong with kind of making him prove it and earn it. And, you know, he's going to play. He's he's going to be in the second unit at least the start of the year. He's going to play. He's going to get his minutes. If it becomes absolutely evident that he should be starting and he's outplaying Fournier, I think that's going to happen. But I really I, – I think Thibodeau is doing the – it's fine doing what he's doing. There's no issue with, you know, going with the veteran, going with the more established guy over the, you know, the young player who really hasn't yet proven that he deserves to be the starter. Um, I get Nick fans love love Grimes. I get they yes. they're not they're not high on Fournier. You know, his defense isn't great, but it, you know, give the coach some credit. Let's let's see kind of what happens here. No, oh, I I agree. I I prefer Grimes. Okay. Uh, I believe uh, Evan Fournier from the bench, uh, in my opinion, uh, it's more uh, great from this team. But it's my opinion, Zach. Uh, I like so much uh, Quentin Grimes in, in your defense. Uh, can be shoot three, two. And uh, I like so much Grimes, Zach, because uh, this player... Um, can be uh, play your games without the ball. Uh, the most Julius Randle, RJ Barrett, Jalen Brunson needs the ball. Quentin Grimes, uh, in my opinion, don't need so much like these guys. I, I think great uh, Quentin Grimes because of that. But it's my opinion. <laughs> you know, Knicks fan base love this guy. Uh, RJ Barrett, uh, Quentin Grimes, and Obi Taupin. You know, you know. Um, I, uh, I want to talk with you now uh, about younger players from the New York Knicks. Uh, we're talking uh, about uh, RJ Barrett and Quentin Grimes. But I won't talk with you about the another players. Uh, I want your opinion about Obi Taupin, 
for for example, uh, head, head uh, uh, this player has a more minutes in the next season. What do you think, for example, uh, Emmanuel Kikley, Deuce McBride, and another younger players? What do you think about this? Um, yeah, look, it, they the Knicks have a lot of young talent. You know, it it it's kind of going to be interesting just to see how Obi and and quickly fit in here. You know, they're going to be on the second unit. Problem for Obi is you have Randall, you you know you have Robinson, you have Hartenstein. I just don't know if I see an avenue for Obi to see more playing time. You know, um, clearly D Thibodeau does not want to play Obi and Randall together. He thinks they're it hurts their defense too much. You sign Hartenstein here to play. Hartenstein's a good player. You know, now look if, if Obi is just fantastic, they're going to have to find a way to play him, but. I just don't know if I see a way for him to be getting more than 15, 16 minutes a game here with the roster they have. You know, as far as quickly, I think you're going to see him kind of going back to the role he had as a rookie, you know, where, look, he's going to play with Rose in the backcourt. He's probably going to play off the ball a lot. He's not going to be, you know, he's going to, they're going to be looking for him to score more, be kind of like a microwave score off the bench. Um, and kind of that's a CI role. I think, I think it'll be, I think it'll help him to kind of, not have to worry about trying to be a point guard and developing that playmaking skills and just worry about doing what he does well, which is score the ball. Um, so, you know, I, I think those two guys, you know, it's important for them to take the next step and improve, but they're going to have to do it with the minutes they have. I don't see either of them barring injuries. I don't see either of these guys all of a sudden getting huge minutes here. And uh, Ken Reg, uh, I ask you because I am Ori about this guy. I don't believe, Zach, uh, this player can be a great chance in the next season. Uh, what do you think about Ken Reg? You know, he, he's had some opportunities um, to, um, you know, he's, he's had some opportunities here to to, you know, to prove himself, you know, in the preseason, you know, Grimes has been out 48 missed a game and, you know, he, he just hasn't, you know, he just hasn't produced for whatever reason, you know, he, his shot selection is if he, he's, you know, his defense hasn't been great. You know, I, he's not going to be part of the rotation here when the season starts. I just, he has not impressed and he has not performed as, you know, you think he might have. Um, and, you know, I, I'm sure he's disappointed. I'm sure the Knicks are disappointed. But he's, look, he's the avenue to playing. I just I just don't see it here. Um, he's going to have to be patient. Maybe injuries happen and, and he finds a role here. But right now, he's, he's not going to be part of this rotation. Uh, and Derek Rose, Zach, do you have – uh, expectations yet, yet with this guy, or uh, do you believe the this player uh, will be more uh, important, like a mentor with these younger players? What do you think about Derrick Rose in New York Knicks? Yeah, I, look, as long as he's healthy, he's going to produce. He's in great shape. You know he's lost weight with, with Brunson here. They're not going to have to play him huge minutes. I think I think Rose is going to be good this year. I think he's going to be a productive player for them. Um, you know I, I don't I don't see why he wouldn't be. Um, you know he was obviously so important to this team two years ago, and now, you know he's he's going to they're going to be able to handle his minutes. They're not going to have to maybe don't play him back to backs. You know they could kind of bring him along slow. But I, I, I see him really being a huge part of the second unit and, and being a big part of this team. Zach, I love Derrick Rose. I love Derrick Rose. But uh, I totally agree. Totally agree uh, about your opinion about this guy. And the last question. Last question, bro. Uh, the most big important <laughs> question in this interview. Uh, Zach, what's your... Uh, expectations 
uh, with the New York Knicks in the next season? Uh, do you believe uh, playing, playing, and later playoffs, playoffs, or nothing? What do you? What's your expectations with this team? You know, I think they're better. Um, I think they're better than last year. How much better that remains to be seen. I, I think realistic expectations is, you know, 42 to 44 wins. I think the playing tournament is something that should happen. You know, to me, the biggest problem with the Knicks is the Eastern Conference is just so good. You know, it, it's so Very deep. Very stronger. <laughs> right. You, you added, you know, the Hawks added DeJounte Murray. The, the Cavs added Donovan Mitchell. Um, you know, other teams, you know, the, the Nets, I, I don't course. remember Zach. I don't, I don't remember this guy, Donovan Mitchell, who this guy, <laughs> sorry. So, you know, the issue is it, the league, the conference is just so deep. I do think the Knicks have a better team than last year. I don't think they're significantly better, but I definitely think they're better. You know, I, I would pick them 43 and 39, I think ninth place play in tournament and then see what happens. But I, you know, I do expect them to be better. I do expect them to be fun and entertaining. I just think the, the conference just kind of lowers their ceiling here. No, I totally agree. I totally agree because uh, this, our conference, it's very hard, very hard in the next season. But Zach, Zach uh, I have a point. Uh, do, uh, do you remember uh, pandemic season? N uh, nobody, nobody believe uh in Knicks in this season Knicks uh four seed four seed uh in playoffs um and and I mentioned this guy Knicks had a Alfred Payton point guard now <laughs> this team had a solid solid point guard um I agree with you about expectations But uh, I remember uh, R.J. Barrett interview. R.J. Barrett said, uh, "Knicks will shock." Okay, <laughs> so I I I won't Zach. Uh, Knicks surprise me, surprise me in the next season and the future. Nobody knows. Nobody knows. And I just won't Zach. I just won't Knicks great in this league. Hey, we'll see. I mean, I, I definitely think they're going to be fun to watch. Um, you know, and we'll, you know, we'll kind of see how it goes. Yes, yes. I just say uh, New York City and Nick fans around the world, Zach, deserve, deserve a better team. Just it. Just it. <laughs> and Zach, uh, I want to say thank you thank you so much so much for for coming uh, again in this channel great honor ever when i talk with you i am a big fan from your job and i hope see you so many times in this channel thank you so much bro thanks so much my pleasure have a good day okay okay bro we'll uh, see take care bye bye, -bye. bye. Queria comentar com vocês, né? Nós temos agora uma novidade aqui com relação ao Nick Fans Brasil, que o canal agora pode ter o programa de membros, né, no YouTube. Então eu gostaria de pedir para você, você que puder, se inscreva também, né? Seja membro, seja membro do Nick Fans Brasil. Apenas R$ 7,99 por mês, apenas R$ 7,99. E você vai ter vantagens exclusivas, vantagens exclusivas por ser membro do canal Nick Fans Brasil. Uma delas, você vai ter grupo especial no WhatsApp, que você vai ter as notícias sempre antes, né? Vídeos e etc. sempre ditos antes para os membros. Uh, benefícios que vão ser estudados ao longo do tempo, que vão ser exclusivos para vocês. Além de sorteios, galera. Quem for membro vai ter essa vantagem, galera. Então, bora lá, participa e apoia o canal Nick Fans Brasil, pessoal. Beleza? E aí pessoal, este foi mais um vídeo aqui no canal Nick Fans Brasil. Espero que vocês tenham gostado, né? E como é de praxe, pessoal, você, você mesmo que está assistindo pela primeira vez o canal Nick Fans Brasil, não se esqueça de se inscrever, se inscreva 
aqui no canal Nick Fans Brasil. Não esqueça, né, você que já é inscrito, de ativar o sininho para notificação de novos vídeos. E também sempre deixar o seu like, um comentário, compartilhar com os amigos, por que não? Para ajudar com que o canal Nick Fans Brasil chegue cada vez em mais e mais pessoas, pessoal. Beleza? Conto com a ajuda de vocês, Nick Fans. Um abraço! I do, are you down with the orange and the blue?